Welcome to this incredible training video by one of the world's greatest teachers has proudly been brought to you by William Callahan, Internet Market Successes Peer-to-Peer. -peer. When you're done with the video, please go below the video in the description box below the video to see the trainer's own worded description. And also to like, share, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss a single one of the many power pack upcoming videos just for you. And a special thanks to this powerful teacher for letting us publish this for you. And now, here's your video. Thank you. William Callahan, Internet Market Successes Peer to Peer. Hello, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and we're here for another exciting and important uh, financial education, money for millennials or millennials and their money. Because as you and I know, our school teaches us this about money. Yeah. And it really kind of screws people up because they go out of school and they start doing the thing we talked about, go to school and get a job, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the first two lessons. So we have Alexandra here. She is a daughter of our dear friends, Fernando and Cecilio Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. And Alexandra was born the same year that Rich Dad was born. Yeah. And again, for those of you who may not know, my Rich Dad was my best friend's father. My poor dad was an academic straight A student. I wasn't. <laughs> I was a D, F, and C student on a good day. But my rich dad never finished school. So he had a completely different point of view. It's not right or wrong, but rich dad was an entrepreneur, and poor dad was a school teacher, head of education, PhD, Stanford, University of Chicago, you know, all the credentials for academics. So at the age of nine in Hilo, Hawaii, my rich dad started teaching me. Because I asked a question of my teacher, my fourth grade teacher, said, what do we learn about money? <laughs> well, we don't teach about money. And I thought that was really stupid. You know, why go to school and get a job and know nothing about money? So with that, this was his lesson number one, and the rich don't work for money. So when I show you that, what goes through your head? Because I already know your philosophy, it makes a lot of sense to me. But, yeah. but, but for somebody watching this for the first time, it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Because you go to a job, you go to yeah. school, you get a job, so you can work for money, right? That's the purpose of life. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. To be a slave for money. Exactly. And work for idiots like me. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, um, so the, my way of teaching is to first put doubt in your brain mm -hmm. to challenge your belief systems. And then maybe you can choose new beliefs or keep up with old beliefs. Right? So when you think about working for money, what comes to your head? I think about the, the time that I worked at the bank and I was working paycheck to paycheck and I wasn't exposed to the financial education that you provide me with. And so it was kind of sad that I couldn't afford the things that I wanted to do. And I was just in this cycle of paying my bills and going to work and Correct. that's it. Do you have friends who haven't found a good job even though they went to school? So I have many friends that have graduated and they're told that they're going to go to school and they're going to find a job and they find themselves without anything. So many of them have found a job and many of them have also not found a job. Yeah, the irony is, you know, when I, when I left school in the 60s, there were plenty of jobs. But the world has changed. Yeah. And our schools have and so they're still making this innate promise of get a job. And I was very fortunate when I graduated in 69. We're the highest paid graduates in the world. My classmates were making about 120 to 150,000 a year. It's not much money today, but 1969, that was a lot of money. But naturally, as young guys do, we spent every penny of it. <laughs> yeah. So I had my rich dad's lesson, the rich don't work for money, in my head. I said, okay. I'm making all this money, I have a secure job, but what's beyond that? And that's where education comes in. So if I could explain this to you for the, for the rest of the millennial lessons, it's really going to be on this theme here. Because financial education is about not working for money. Like one of the first questions, when I finally realized what my rich dad was saying, I said, well, when do I never need a paycheck again? So my goal wasn't, you know, go to the moon or, you know, cure cancer. My job was, when 
when I never need a paycheck again. Because as long as you need a paycheck, be it from an employer or like my poor dad, he was so afraid of losing his government pension. I'm going, Jesus, what a way to run your life, your pension. So my old man got, kind of got fired. He lost his pension. It was the most frightening thing in the world to him. He had no pension. Then it was Social Security, which is even worse. So that's why my goal when I was about your age, a little older, around 25, I said, my goal is to never need a paycheck again from anybody even the government. I don't want any Medicare, Social Security, or whatever. You know, if I was a military pilot, so oh, you got to get the military pilot pension. I said, you do, but I'm not going to. And just because of this here, that was the difference. Because I never wanted to work for money to need a paycheck. So the next few lessons in Millennial Money, you'll find out what I do work for. So for right now, just let me go to the... Um, lesson here. So this comes from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and this these are some of the distinctions. It was the advantage I had at age nine, because I knew what I wanted to work for. And this here, in simple terms, is called a financial statement. In school, they teach you get a FICO score. FICO is BS. All it means, how could you pay your bills? That's all FICO means, okay? should be the FIDO score. Good dog. So this is what your banker wants to see. So when I was nine years old, playing Monopoly with my rich dad, this is a lesson that's not included in Monopoly, but Rich Dad taught me. And fun fundamentally, the problem that most people make, they go to school to get a job, and they work here. So this is the poor middle class of these guys. And we're going to talk about later, your first line item expense is taxes. You know, just recently, President Trump said he had a tax cut. He didn't have a tax cut for these guys. As you know, the rules are always written for the rich. Okay? I didn't make the rules. You can get angry at me, but these are the rules. The rich make the rules. The golden rule. Who he who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> yeah. So the tax cut went to people here. That's where it goes to. You'll learn more about this later on. But this is what I work for. So what I work for, number one, is I'm an entrepreneur. I want businesses. I have multiple businesses. And I don't work in them, as you know, because you work here. You never see me do it. No. Because I don't work for a paycheck. Exactly. Next is real estate. And real estate is good for many things we could go into. But number one is debt. I use a lot of debt to buy real estate, and I pay no taxes. That's the relationship there. The next is paper. And that's savings, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and that stuff. I don't have any of that stuff. I don't save money. I don't have any of that. But this is what most people have to go to school and get a job, get a 401k and save money. Loser. I'm doing that just to upset you guys. But maybe you'll start to think. Because I didn't make the rules. I'm just telling you these are the rules. These people pay the highest taxes. And they work the hardest. And the last are commodities. Four different asset classes. So commodities are... Number one is gold, silver, oil, land, water, food. So this is what I work for. When I left school, rather than working for a paycheck and working for money, my education had to go beyond getting a job, which I had a good job. But I now had to start when I left school, about your age. The thing I, I focused on first, actually, was commodities. So back in 1972, I started buying gold. It was illegal for Americans to own gold. You can imagine that. Back in 72. Today you have Bitcoin. It's different. Okay? Everything is changing so rapidly today. So I started with gold, but actually the next thing was actually oil, because I went to school to be a tanker officer. 
driving ships with Standard Oil. So I understand oil. If I own, my wife and I don't own Standard Oil or Chevron or Exxon. We own oil wells. Again, taxes. You get no tax breaks for owning paper oil. Huge tax breaks for owning real oil. And then I went into real estate. Why? Because I can use debt to buy real estate. And because I use debt, I pay no taxes. And then third, I started my business, my first real, real business. I had many, many businesses as a kid. But my first real business was a nylon and Velcro surfer board business. And I went worldwide right away. The trouble is I was an idiot. And the business went up. And the business came down. What kept me alive was this and this. Okay. So you may say, well, aren't you working for money? But we'll go into that next. I don't want what's called a paycheck. I want cash flow. So that's what I mean by the rich don't work for money. You want cash flow that pays very little taxes, and I can use lots of debt over here. The average person went to school, their biggest liability they have is student loans, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course, definitely. I mean, it's horrible what they do to you guys today. Yeah, student loans is the worst type of debt of all because you cannot declare bankruptcy on it. Then you get out, you try and buy a house, and you call it an asset, and it's really a liability. Why? Because the cash is flowing that way. Your house costs you money every year. You rent a house, it don't cost you money. Okay. Then you have to have a nice car. I have one of those. Yes. So the problem with most young people is they go to school to get that job, and a lot of it has student loan debt. Then they try and get married and buy a house, they have a car, and then they have credit card debt. But they never have the chance to come over here. If they do any investing in America, it's a 401k, which I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Um, you should, but I don't, because I don't have to. Because I went to school for here, and people who don't go to school should be here. This is a 401k, IRA, ETFs, and that stuff, paper savings. I don't touch that stuff. And we'll go into that later on. Okay. So when I say rich don't work for money, I never want to be dependent on a paycheck, either from an employer or the government. I want to be a free human being. Any comments, any questions on this? Well, now I see it clearly because it's ironic how people were upset about Trump not paying taxes. But in reality, you have to be a complete idiot if you pay taxes, especially when you were talking about your assets and how the government wants you to have these things. They want you to own homes and invest in properties. And so that's exactly what Trump is doing, so he gets all the tax benefits from it. Correct. So many people come to this country because they want to live the American dream of buying your house, um, going to a job, working paycheck to paycheck, going to school, when in reality, that's a nightmare. And what happens if they lose their job? They lose all security they were promised, and they lose everything, and they don't have anything to provide for their family either. So what is your brain? I mean, you're a very smart young lady, but now your brain is a think like Yeah. So the question is, when I talk to people about financial education, well, right now, we're going to talk about this. Another issue is Bitcoin, the dollar, and gold. Which one is better? I love real estate, again, because it's debt. I use debt to buy real estate. And everybody else is saying, get out of debt, mm -hmm. right? I love debt. Yeah. Trump loves debt. He's a king of debt. Mm -hmm. I'm in debt about $600 million. The average person cannot pay for the credit card debt. Mm -hmm. That's how tragic it is. Mm -hmm. And he's educated. I'm talking about educated people, yeah. right? And then this here, I get tax breaks because I have employees. This will be another subject going down with millennial money. But if you have a job, you're taxed. If you hire employees, they give you tax breaks. Look at right now, Amazon is looking for a new home. Every government wants to give them a home. You know, please move to Indiana. Please move to Canada. Why? 
was they'll bring in employees, and employees pay the tax. Yeah. It's the same as Tesla. They got, I think, $50 billion or something from the state of Nevada because they bring in employees. So that's why when your teacher says you go to school get a job, you say, I think I'll think a little bit differently this time. <laughs> now, you need a job in interim, mm -hmm. but you want a job with experience. That's the difference. So the reason Rich says lesson number one is rich don't work for money is I never want a paycheck. I want to use debt, and I don't want to pay tax. I want minimum, I pay some tax, but minimum tax. Mm -hmm. But I want to accumulate this so I have cash flow. Anything you want to say? Any questions on that? No, but I can, I'm happy because I can see both sides. I can see the employee side and the entrepreneur side. And thankfully, because I work in this company, I'm not, um, I'm not forced to work a nine to, regular nine to five job. I'm able to actually work on my own projects, and it's incentivized that we actually do become entrepreneurs. Our company encourages everybody to come here. So we don't have a 401k. Well, the retirement no. plan you know, that keeps you motivated, right? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. So what would you say to your friends or your fellow millennials about why the rich don't work for money? I would tell them they really truly need to educate themselves because to work for money is completely ridiculous. While taxes are increasing and the inflation is increasing, it doesn't make any sense to be working from paycheck to paycheck. The rich don't work for money. The money money works for them. Or being afraid of being fired. Yeah. Or losing your pension. Mm -hmm. Too less, that's the biggest terror of most people. I might lose my pension too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really sad that it's one of the biggest fears of everybody in a, on a daily basis, whether they're going to get fired or not. And just seeing that my dad previously and my mother were both scared of not being able to support our family, and now, thankfully, because we followed your philosophy, we have all the freedom in the world. And your mother is a real estate agent. Oh, she, yeah. uh, she's an investor, a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. And she can help you. Yeah, exactly. So both of them are my team, and, and the day tomorrow, if I do get fired, I have my properties to live off of. Yeah. So. And you, you do too good a job for us to fire you. Right? <laughs> exactly. Well, no, I work hard here. <laughs> are you afraid of being, if you make a mistake in this company, are you fired? No, mistakes are actually encouraged. Um, coming from a traditional work system where we are punished for it, and then coming to this one where they're actually incentivized because we learn from them, it's amazing. Correct. Yeah. But you have to admit you made a mistake. Yeah, exactly. You cover up the mistake, you're fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Sarah, my supervisor, whenever, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I messed up. She's like, no, it's okay, you learn from your mistakes. And that's, that's our culture. Yeah, it's awesome. So thank you. So the rich don't work for what? Money. And for those here at home, I had a friend discuss this. Thank you. <laughs>